Hello and welcome to this session. I am Raghav and today we are going to learn how to get data from Excel using TestNG and how to make our test data driven. So we are going to go very basic step by step and we will learn how to get data from Excel file, how to create Excel data provider function, how do we use TestNG add data provider annotation. We will also learn how do we refer our test data from the data provider and finally we will see how can we make our selenium test data driven using testng and during this session i will also share some useful tips with you so let's get started and the prerequisite for this session is you must already have the excel libraries added and we have used apache pui and you should already have created the functions to read data from excel now this is something we have already learned in our last session and i will also provide the link for that video in the description or notes section of this video so you can watch that in case you have not already watched that in that session we learned from scratch how do we add apache pui libraries and how do we create excel reading functions so that will be prerequisite and once you have watched that let us see the first thing we have to do is how to get test data from excel so basic four things we have to do here is we should have a function to get row count a function to get column count from excel a function to get the string data and a function to get the numerical cell data so let me just take you to eclipse and this is the framework that we have been creating and also in case you have not watched the earlier sessions uh, you can still continue with this session in case you already have some basic knowledge you can continue here so in the last session we already created uh, this functions in the utilities so if I go to my SIC test Java we have the utils package and here we created excel utils class and in this class we created a function to get row count we also created a function to get cell data string we also created a function to get cell data number I think we did not create a function for get column count so I will just copy this and just paste it here and I will say this is get column count and here I will have to use the function sheet dot get rows so you can get the first row with the zero index and then you can say get physical number of cells and I will say this is column count and this is the function to get the column count now this we have already done in the last session so I am not going too much details here so this you can already also see if you have not seen earlier you can see the last session and now we will start with how to create a excel data provider function so here we have basic four steps very simple steps the first one is we have to create a new class called excel data provider and you can name it anything so I will again go to my utils folder a utils package do a right click new class and here I will name it excel data provider you can give any name here and I will say finish so this is the new class we have created and the second step is we have to create a function and create object for excel utils class where we have added our functions for reading excel file so here I will say I will create a function I will say public void uh, let us say test data and here inside the function I will create an object for excel utils class so I will say excel utils I can give any variable name excel equals new excel utils and you see it is asking us for a excel path and the sheet name because in our excel utils we had created a constructor that takes excel path and sheet name two string parameters so what I will do is instead of passing it or instead of defining these two variables here I will take these as input to this particular function so I will say get string excel path and get string sheet name so this should be sheet name here and I think here uh, I will have to I will say this is sheet name yeah okay so a very simple function where 
I am creating an object for the Excel Utils class and now then we will get the row count and column count using the Excel functions so now using this reference to the class which is Excel I can get I can call the function so I will say Excel dot get row count and then Excel dot get column count and what I will do is I will store them into integer values so I will say int row count equals this and int column count equals this so whatever be the number of rows that will be stored here the number of columns will be stored in column count now here I am getting a uh, error and here it is saying change return type of get row count to int so now because we are storing this the uh, whatever is the output from this function into a variable integer variable so we have to give the return type here as integer so I will go back to my excel utils and wherever I have these functions so let me go so here I will say return type instead of void is int and I will declare int row count outside the try block so that I can return it and I will say this is 0 and inside the function inside a try block it is getting the row count from this function and at the end I will say return row count same thing I will do with get column count function this int column count I will declare above try block and I will initialize it to 0 and inside try block it will get its value and at the end after the catch block I will return column count and the return type instead of void I will say int and save and now if I come back to here this class you can see there are no errors now okay so now we have got the row count and column count and now we have to run a loop to get all the data into an object array so let us see what to do now I have got this row count and column count what I will do is I will start a loop and I will say for loop int i equals 1 so I have to start with the number of rows and I am starting with 1 and not 0 why because let me just show you if I go to my excel and these are the excels we already created in our earlier session let me just open one of these excel so you can see here we have two variables username and password and this is the value here so here the first row is a header row so I have to skip this row and I, I have to take I have to start getting data from the second row which is actually row index number one so it starts with a zero index so this is row number zero row number one row number two and so on similarly column number zero column number one column number two and so on so in case of column it is okay we will start with zero and then one but in case of row because the first row is header row we have to start with one so therefore I will say int i equals one and i I have to go until so i less than row count I will keep this here row count and again semicolon i plus plus so this loop will run starting with the row index 1 and until the number of rows we have so as of now if you look at our excel as of now it has only just one row of data so this will run only once and then inside this for loop we have to create another for loop so here I am doing nesting of for loops and here we have to run a for loop equal to the number of columns so here I will initialize another variable j equals 0 now in case of column we can start with 0 and then j is less than this column count and j plus plus ok and again curly braces start and stop and now inside this for loop I can get the data so I will use excel dot get data string this is the function we had created earlier and row number will be i column number will be j so this will get the data so for the first time it will run it will get the data from row number 1 and column number 0 so that will be 
row number 1 and column number 0 is this so first time it should get admin second time row number 1 and column number 1 that will be this value okay so let us also print it or I will first save it in a string I will say string cell data equals this and I'm getting an error here because I don't have a return type I think there let me just check yeah so in my method which is get cell data string I will again convert the return type instead of void to string and here I will say string cell data equals null and here I am getting the value and at the end after catch block I will return cell data okay so now if I go back there are no errors and now I can print this out I will say syso control spacebar to auto complete and I will say this is cell data okay now let us try to run this and to run this for now I will have to add a main method in this class so I will add a main method control spacebar to auto complete and here I also have to make this method as static so that it can be called from main which is a static method and I will say test data and here I have to provide the excel path and sheet name so for now what I will do is I will just for a temporary basis I will say I will provide excel path and this is the location I will right click on my excel go to properties and copy this location and here I will give this here to excel path so this is the location of excel and sheet name so if I go to my excel the sheet name is sheet1 I have not renamed it so let me just use this I will say it is sheet1 and in the earlier session we have already seen how to get the relative path within the project so that you know but for now I am just doing it for temporary purpose to run this program and check so here now let me just try to run this I will right click run as Java application and yes you can see we are getting number of rows to number of rows to admin and this is getting printed two times because we are also printing it inside the actual functions so if you see here we are using the sysout statements here so let me just comment out the sysout statements from the functions calling uh, these functions so this is get column count uh, this is yeah I think this is fine the only thing is I forgot to make it as columns number of columns yeah this is fine so you can see we are getting the data here and also what I can do here is in the sysout I can say cell data and I can say plus here and I will just do this and instead of system.out.println I will say system.out.print ln is for new line and after this loop I will say system.out.println so that after one loop it will go to the next line and if I run this now again you can see the console so you can see number of rows are 2 number of columns are 2 and it is now printing our data here okay so our program is running fine and also we have to now get the data into an object array so let us define an object array here so I will say object and I will say let us say this is data and I will create two dimensional object so this means this is a two dimensional object and actually we can also create a two dimensional array of string type of any other type but because we are not sure that the data into our excel can be of string can be data of numbers or can be anything so it is safe to declare a, a object array which is a two dimensional array and I will say equals new object and here I will give the size so the size should be equal to row count and column count so it should be like this so this will be a two dimensional array where the size the row will be equal to the row count here and the column will be equal to the column count here but as we have seen the first row we are taking as header so I have to decrease one from here so here row count I will say row count minus one so you can 
understand right if I have 10 rows of data the total number of rows will be 11 because we have the first row as header so that is why I am subtracting one from the row count and column count is fine okay so now we have created this object and inside this loop I will keep on adding the data into our object array so I will say data here I will say i and j equals to cell data and also here I will have to say i minus 1 because our i starts with 1 but the index in our, our array starts with 0 so when it is 1 it should actually be 0 when it is 2 it should actually be 1 so that is why I am saying i minus 1 and j is fine and I am keeping on adding the data into this array and at the end of this function I will return this object array so I will say return data and it will create an error because our return type is void so again here I will say return type is object array which is a two dimensional object array okay so now we are done with all our four steps we have created a excel data provider function let us now see how to use test ng data provider and here we will again use simple three steps the first step is we have to create a function and provide the test ng annotation at data provider so here I will go up and create a new function here I will say public static I will just say get data and here I will use the annotation data provider from test ng so DATAP and I will press control space bar and I should take this from org test ng dot annotations and in the brackets I will say name equals to you can give any name so for example this is the data for test 1 I will just use test 1 data okay and here this is the data and so this should be some return type here void and yes so I have created a function and provided test ng annotation and then here inside the function I have to call the excel data provider function with excel and sheet name so now from here I will provide I will call this test data function so I will say test data control space bar to autocomplete and now from the main method I will take this here okay and sheet name is sheet1 and actually I no longer need the main method now so I can remove this and also now even if I do not make these methods as static that will work I made it static so that I can use the main method so here I am calling the test data function which is this one I am providing the excel path which is the path to this excel file and then I am providing the sheet name as sheet1 okay so this will help because you can have multiple sheets for different test cases so now I am just choosing for test 1 which is sheet 1 and again I will take this into an object I will say object data equals this and I will return this data object so here again return type I have to make for this function as well as a object array so here you can see simply we have created a function provided it as an annotation for test ng which is add data provider given it some name and then calling this function and then whatever data I have got from this function in the object array I will return that data here okay so these are the simple steps I have done and now we have already returned the data object so we have now completed this section how to use test ng add data provider and now we have to do the main part which is how to refer test data from data provider and here the first step is we have to create a function and provide the test ng annotation at test and give it the data provider so now here I will create another function here so I will say public void let me say this is test1 and here I will say this is I will give the annotation test ng annotation test so make sure this is from org test ng annotations and I will also give a parameter here so I will say 
data provider equals test data or whatever is the data provider name here so you have to say data provider equals so you make sure that you give the same name whatever you have given to your data provider function I will copy this from here and paste it here now we have done the first step the second step is in the function arguments get input parameters equal to the parameters in your excel file so here in the arguments or input parameters you will de declare arguments equivalent to the number of arguments or number of parameters you have in your excel data so here I have two so I will say string both are string types so I will say string username and I will say string password okay and now you actually do not have to do anything now because now all the things will be taken care by testng and our functions that we have already created so if I inside this function if I just give a sysout statement and say username and print username here and let me also print the password here separating it with a pipe symbol and password and I will just run this I will say I will right click run as test ng test and let us see what happens so everything is passed if I go to the console do you see this it is now printing this admin admin123 and then do you also see this past test1 admin admin123 and this is coming from test ng this is something we have not uh, printed on the console so now our test will run with equivalent to the number of times that we have rows in our test data or our excel file so let me just show you again uh, also let me just go inside this and comment out the system out println statement so that you know we have only a single statement here okay so now you can see if I just add more data here I will not have to do anything in my code I will add one more data here admin2 and admin1234 and save it and let me run this again run as test ng test and yes do you see now so it is now running the test with two sets of data this was the first set admin admin123 and this was the second set so now you can see it is very easy you can keep on adding data to your excel files whatever updates addition deletion you have to do to your data you can do here and here you don't have to worry everything will be referred from your data and you can make your test data driven so third step use values in your test which we have already done and now we will see a sample data driven selenium test using this approach so I will use the same function which is uh, this test one and here I will just create some selenium code so what I will do is I will get some data or some before test method from an earlier class that we have created earlier so I will go to test ng demo and here we have this before test method where we are uh, initializing the browser and setting it to a particular browser I will copy this go to my excel data provider and just paste it here and here we actually do not need this this was a example I showed earlier using properties file and log4j and here I have to declare web driver at the class level so I will say web driver driver equals null here and then here it should be referred from there and let me import web driver from selenium so yeah this should be fine so we are creating a driver instance here and now let me just create a simple test I will go to let me go to this orange HRM website so I will copy this URL and I will say driver dot get to this URL and then in this I will add a username so I will inspect this element and let us see what values we have so we have an ID here so let us find this with ID 
I will say driver dot find element by dot ID and give the ID here and here I will say dot send keys and I will use our username from our excel file here and same thing we will do with the password so here this is the password box I will right click inspect and the ID here is txt password so let me copy this again and here I will say driver dot find element by dot ID again and ID is this and I will say dot send keys and I will use our password and also I will just uh, wait for some time I will use thread dot sleep so that it is visible what it is doing thread dot sleep for let us say two seconds and it will ask us to enclose with try catch or add throws I will just add throws here so I will just say throws exception so here you can see a very simple test ng test where we are going to this URL and adding username and password and now this should come from our excel file and also let us do one thing I will add one more data set here admin 3 and admin 1 2 3 4 5 and save this and let us now see what happens I will say right click run as test ng test and let us see it goes to a chrome browser goes to our URL and this is the first set admin this is the second set and this is the third set so you can see it is now running equivalent to the number of data sets we have provided okay so this is how you can make your selenium test as data driven so let us do a very quick recap today we learned how to get test data from excel how to create excel data provider functions how do we use test ng add data provider annotation how do we refer test data from data provider and how do we run a simple data driven test in selenium i hope this session was very useful for you i will also recommend that you do some practice with some different examples and some selenium test and i will meet you in the next episode thank you for watching